Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one online platform for creatives. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, this is one that I actually recorded a while ago and scheduled, but uh, forgot that it's probably gonna air near the end of the year, so I wanted to re-record this intro. Uh, so when the video starts, things are gonna change a little bit, just a heads up. But I uh, just wanted to say happy holidays. Also that I'm gonna have a video launching next week on the channel uh, talking about kind of what's most important to me with photography in 2022 to kick off the new year. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But uh, this one in particular, this is something that I've wanted to talk about for a while now. Uh, previously on the channel, I've done some videos that focus on like these common discussions in the film photography world. I've talked about overexposing film before, uh, 645 versus 35. But every now and then the conversation pops up about uh, do you edit or should you edit your film photos? It's something I was actually asked on a podcast recently as well. It's what inspired this. And I think, you know, especially if you're new to film, if you don't understand it correctly, it can end up being uh, pretty limiting. I also just think the question's kind of flawed in the first place. So I uh, wanna share my thoughts today on this, get a discussion going and uh, let's jump into it. So in this video today, we're gonna to be talking mostly about negative film. The last point will apply to slide film as well, but I think it's safe to say that most people are probably shooting negative film, especially if you're just starting out. So I have three points I'm gonna focus on. I'm gonna try and keep this nice and clear and concise and quick, and uh, let's jump into it. So I want to start this video by talking about like the film look. Uh, as a whole, but even with specific film stocks, just because I think this is something that gets misinterpreted a lot due to a number of reasons, you know, just like certain buzzwords getting attached to specific film stocks, um, editing styles that are on trend, different looks from different labs, uh, film presets that have been made over the years for digital. All of these things can combine together to make people expect these like very specific and exaggerated results from individual film stocks. And this can be really confusing, especially if you're just starting out. For example, here's a few images that were shot on Portra 400 that I had scanned at a lab on a Fuji Frontier and I got them to favor the highlights. And as you can see, it's quite contrasty and saturated, kind of the opposite of what you'd expect with this film, just based off of some of the things you read online. What can also be confusing when you're looking at images is obviously everyone has varying skill levels. It's using different processes and you can sometimes come across images that have color casts or color shifts or maybe were converted poorly. And sometimes you can end up thinking that this look is from the film when really it's from the conversion and the person who is doing the work. So when it comes to images shot on film that are being scanned, you know, part of it obviously is the film, but a big part of it is the process. You're basically taking this negative that you have to convert into a positive. If you're shooting color, there's this orange mask you have to deal with. And then there's just a number of different ways and approaches that you can take. And those are all going to affect the final look of that image. So if you're shooting film and you're scanning it, you are already editing your images. So if you say that I don't want to edit my film scans that I get back from a lab because I don't want to mess with the look of the film, well, as we just kind of explored, you're really just leaving it up to the lab to determine how your images are going to look. And I've said it before on this channel, but really you could take the same negative, you could mail it out to 10 different labs and you would probably get 10 different looks back, some minor and some major. So we're gonna jump on the computer for this next part, look at some image examples and just dive into this a little bit deeper. Okay, so got some image examples here. These are from a test that I did with a lab a few years ago when I was getting them to scan my work. I just wanted to see the different options with uh, scanners that they had. So this is all Portra 400. This image here is, I believe on the Fuji Frontier. So on the left, we have Fuji Frontier. On the right is the Noritsu. The Fuji was scanned uh, for the highlights the Noritsu was just like a neutral scan. You can see there's a pretty huge difference between these. Uh, the red on the door is quite a bit different. It's more like orangey on the uh, Fuji. And then obviously brightness levels vary a lot. Blues are even different in the sky. Yellow's a little bit different. And then this one, same deal. So Fuji Frontier on the left, Noritsu on the right. Huge difference between these two. Obviously brightness levels, but also color as well. We're looking at those reds again. 
and then one more here. So Fuji on the left, Noritsu on the right. This one's maybe not as drastic. They're a little closer. Uh, but the point with these is just uh, even from this same lab, just getting them to use two different scanners and changing my preference for brightness levels gave me two very different looking film scans. So, you know, especially with this one here, the Fuji on the left and the Noritsu on the right, they're almost two completely different looking images. So if you didn't know this, you could send to this lab, they could use this scanner, it would look this way, maybe your next order they use a Noritsu. Uh, if you didn't specify anything, you might wonder why your Portra 400 looks so much different from roll to roll. When it comes to scanning at home though, uh, the same thing applies. Obviously there's all sorts of different pieces of software that you can use to scan. So I did some uh, tests here, I'll show you. Ignore the watermarks. I don't own Silverfast, so I just downloaded their demo, but I did a few different image examples here uh, just showing you the difference between Silverfast, uh, ViewScan, and then also using ViewScan with a raw file with Negative Lab Pro. So this first one is Silverfast. This next one is ViewScan. And then this one is ViewScan and Negative Lab Pro. So I'll do a little bit of a comparison here. So Silverfast on the left. View scan on the right. View scan in Negative Lab Pro on the far right. So not as drastic as a difference with the uh, lab scans that we saw, but there is still a difference. You know, each process is providing a different result. Uh, even the colors are changing a little bit between these. So same thing here. We'll put that one on the left. So silver fast on the left. This is view scans rendition. And then this is ViewScan and Negative Lab Pro's rendition. So this is just what makes things uh, so difficult with negative film and, and color negative film specifically when you're doing the conversion processes. Everyone is going to get these different results. And these have been you know, fairly neutral scenes. So this one here we'll jump into next. So this was actually sunset. These are just like the automatic modes that these programs are giving me what they think uh, the image should look like. This would be a lot warmer if I was gonna edit it. It's kind of a point I wanna talk about later. So silver fast. Now we have view scan here on the right and view scan in negative lab pro. So they all vary just slightly. The view scan conversion is actually the most drastic between them. But the point is, you know, if you're at a lab or if you're scanning at home, depending on the software, the scanner, the technician, you're always going to get even just like minor differences between uh, the same image done different ways. So everyone's initial results are going to vary a little bit. But uh, on the other hand, let's say you're shooting digital and you want to claim like you don't edit your digital shots, you want to stay true to the look, that would be totally doable. Uh, let's say you have a Fuji X-T4, I have a Fuji X-T4. If we both shot in Fuji's standard color profile, well, our images are going to look identical. So in that situation, it would obviously apply. When it comes to film though, if you're scanning it, editing it is a necessity. Uh, but even beyond the technical, I think what's more important is when you get to the creative side of things. But before we jump into that next point, I just wanna quickly talk about Squarespace, who's the sponsor of today's video. If you're creative, you know how time consuming and also frustrating building a website can be. And that's why for the past couple of years, I've been very happy using Squarespace for my different creative pursuits gives me a number of options and also flexibility so I can make something like a clean, simple portfolio website, or I can build something a little more complex, say for a blog or a podcast website with an online store. Squarespace really is a great all-in-one option if you're looking to easily build a professional creative website. So check out squarespace.com today for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can use the link squarespace.com slash Kyle McDougall for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, let's jump into the next point. So regardless if you use film or digital, one of the most important parts of the process is just making intentional and really personal decisions that create a certain mood and feel in the final photograph. And obviously editing plays a huge role in this. You know, often my images will have like pretty substantial edits to get them to the point that I want them to be at. And you know, if you're using a lab or if you're converting at home, most of the times you end up with like a very neutral base, like neutral brightness and contrast. You know, obviously the software 
doesn't know how the scene should look. It's just guessing. Uh, obviously the lab technician wasn't there with you. So it's really up to you to take that image afterwards and like make decisions and give it a look that best represents uh, what you saw and what you felt while you're on location. But uh, let's jump on the computer. We're gonna take a, a look at a couple of examples and just explore this point a little more. So this is an image that I shot recently on a Contax 139. It's gonna be in an upcoming video, but this is a view scan in Negative Lab Pro conversion. And this is what the software uh, is giving me after I even made some tweaks. You can see I pulled the brightness way down uh, and I'm tweaked a few other settings. But if we just reset this conversion panel, this is what I ended up with as soon as I did the conversion. This is based on um, Negative Lab Pro guessing what this scene should look like. And this, just to kind of like set the tone, this was shot at sunset with the last little bit of golden light. What I loved about this scene is this uh, old Land Rover was just like getting illuminated by this really warm light. And obviously you can see this initial conversion kind of strips away all of that. You know, this software probably thinks this is like a midday scene. It's trying to give me this very neutral image. So I made some adjustments in Negative Lab Pro to just like pull everything down. I'm not trying to tweak the image as a final in that software. But then I went afterwards and I created a TIFF and I made more adjustments in Lightroom. So this is now where I'm at. So if we look at the two, we'll do a little side by side. So this is the conversion out of Negative Lab Pro. On the right here, this is what I ended up with. So I dropped the exposure even more, uh, kind of reduced the like intensity of these highlights and made everything else darker as well, played with saturation a little bit. You can see quite a few adjustments here, but this is what the image required. So this isn't me like ruining the look of the film. This is me getting an image back to how it should look because the software converting it is making it a prox is making a guess that this scene should look like it was shot midday, but it wasn't like that. What I liked is the darkness, you know, the, the warm glow here on the front of the car. So it required quite a bit of editing to get to this point. And that's how I want it to look because that's how it looked and felt to me while I was there. So this is a black and white one shot close to home. This isn't as drastic, but as you'll see, uh, before I did my edits, this is what was coming out of the, the software. Obviously I made some adjustments in uh, Negative Lab Pro as well, but I shot this early morning. You know, it was still very dark. It was like twilight out. I loved, you know, the mist here, but this initial result, again, is giving me this like neutral base where it thinks, you know, I should make this look like midday. But for me, you know, dropping down the exposure, adding contrast, playing around with the tones a little bit to really let a lot of this fall into dark darkness and recreate that look of this being shot at twilight that wouldn't exist if I didn't edit this photo. So an absolute necessity. And then last one here. So this was in a video that uh, was on my channel not too long ago. Uh, this is again, the conversion out of Negative Lab Pro is right here. So it's very warm, you know, the greens are pretty saturated and this is not the film look. This is the software giving me this look. But when I was here again, this was shot at twilight. This whole kind of foreground was falling in to uh, darkness. You know, it wasn't like super saturated. There weren't these like greens that were popping. So I went, I dropped the exposure, uh, played around with saturation to bring back that like, just like, monochromatic blue look, you know, not letting other things dominate the scene. But without that, if I didn't want to edit this film scan, I would have been left with something like this that didn't represent what I felt and what I saw while I was there on location. So to wrap this up, I just want to say once again that if you're scanning your film, it is kind of being edited already and don't limit yourself to decisions made by a piece of software or by someone else. I think what's most important at the end of the day is just like, getting your image to a point where it best represents like your unique taste as an artist uh, and also what you saw and what you felt while you're on location with the subject you were photographing. So anyways, as always, just wanna say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll talk to you soon.